50 past the hour this morning, a new reaction after former President Donald Trump made a highly anticipated announcement on abortion yesterday. In a video posted online, Trump said he believes specific abortion bans should be left to the states and he did not embrace a federal ban. Trump is now facing pushback from one of his top allies in Washington, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. We know that the Dobbs decision did not say that there's no federal role. The idea that Dobbs prevents the federal government from acting, I think, is an error. The idea of the Republican Party abandoning, abandoning the opposition to late-term abortion, I think, would be a mistake. Joining us now, NBC News correspondent Dasha Burns, NBC News senior White House correspondent Gabe Gutierrez in Battleground, Wisconsin. Stuart Stevens, former chief strategist for Mitt Romney's 2012 campaign. He is a senior advisor at the Lincoln Project and Simone Sanders Townsend, co-host of The Weekend right here on MSNBC. She also served as chief spokesperson for Vice President Harris. So, Dasha, Trump has expressed different views on abortion over the last couple of years. How is this announcement different from what he has said in the past? Yeah, the last couple of decades, in fact, I mean, look, just before making this announcement, he had been teasing and test driving the idea of a 15 or 16 week federal ban. Uh, there was a lot of speculation about whether or not he might endorse something like that in this announcement. Instead, he said, look, I overturned Roe. I'm proud to have done it. But now it's up to the states, which was met with a fast and furious uh, backlash from both the left and the right. But he has been tough to pin down on this, in part because he has been all over the place on this issue. I want to play for you just a, a little mash up of what he has said in the past. Take a listen. I'm very pro-choice. I'm pro-life. Do you believe in punishment for abortion? Yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. Both sides are going to come together. It could be state or it could be federal. I don't frankly care. Also in that announcement video, Jose, he emphasized uh, that Republicans need to win. He said, you can follow your heart, but ultimately we need to win. And in all of the reporting that I've done on, on where he is on this issue, that's ultimately what it comes down to for him. He's considering this issue uh, as part of his decision making for who he might choose to be a vice president, uh, someone who's not going to turn off voters who hasn't taken too hard line a stance here. And we know that he's been frustrated with even the uh, folks that he endorsed in the 2022 midterms because he felt that they were too far to the right on this issue. But but we know that after this announcement, he's getting attacks on both the left and the right as he tries to stake out a more moderate position here. Yeah, I mean, Stuart, let's go into specifics on this. Trump now, uh, after this announcement, he wrote online, quote, many good Republicans lost elections because of this issue. And people like Lindsey Graham that are unrelenting are handing Democrats their dream of the House, Senate and perhaps even the presidency. How much of a political problem is this going to be for Trump within the Republican side of it? Oh, uh, look, I think this is just a total mess for it. And the more they keep talking about it, the worse they're going to make it. Um, you know, you take Lindsey Graham's position. The decades position of those who opposed Roe v. Wade was we're going to leave it up to the states. It took about, you know, 10 minutes after uh, Roe v. Wade was overturned for people like Lindsey Graham to start calling for a federal ban. Um, it, what Trump is doing is saying that states can choose to have the most extreme position banning abortion that they'd like. You can completely ban abortion. Um, I, that's not where the country is. There's actually a surprising degree of a majority opinion on this that overwhelmingly, you know, around 70 percent believe that abortion should be safe and legal uh, and available. So. You know, he's the guy that overturned Roe v. Wade. He says that. And I think it's going to continue to be a huge issue in this campaign. Yeah, I mean, Simone, how much of uh, this uh, announcement and his reaction to the announcement is going to be playing going towards November? And how does it play into the Democrat strategy? Well, look, I, I think uh, the, the way to frame up Donald Trump's announcement is exactly what you and Dasha and, and folks have done. Donald Trump is saying whatever he needs to say to win. He is concerned about winning. He is not, though, telling us what he believes to be true. And so, on that note, you have to watch what he has done and what he does and not just what he says. And I, I think that Democrats have strong ground on this particular issue and have been pointing that out. He was rightfully hammered on this from folks on the left and folks on the right, because 
Donald Trump is just saying whatever he wants to say to get elected. Meanwhile, you have women like Amanda Zorowski, who is featured in that ad from the Biden campaign um, that was out this week, where she and her husband are going through boxes, a box of baby items that were going to be for their baby girl, a baby girl she does not have because she had a miscarriage and could not get an abortion when she needed one. And now Amanda and her husband may not be able to have children again. That is the story of so many women over America, around the country right now, throughout the South, especially in 30 days. Abortion will be outlawed in the South when the six-week ban in Florida goes into effect. So this is a lived reality for folks. And as Democrats continue to highlight this story, um, as the minority leader in, in the state legislature in Florida told me, they flipped a seat from red to blue in January. And the way that they flipped it was talking about abortion. And she said there is a clear delineation for voters. There's one party that's going to protect your freedoms and another party that's not. And that abortion issue is going to be on the ballot in November 2024 in the state of Florida. That's going to no doubt have an impact on the turnout. And Gabe, meanwhile, President Biden announced yesterday in Wisconsin, where you are, a new student loan relief plan. What makes this different than the plan that has been shot down by the Supreme Court? Hi there, Jose. Good morning. Well, yes, this is a hugely significant announcement because the White House says that 10 million borrowers will have at least $5,000 in debt relief. Now, this comes after, as you mentioned, last year the Supreme Court struck down a broader measure. But what the administration is trying to do is target specific uh, borrowers, those that have accrued interest, for example, also those that have been paying off their student loans for 20, 25 years, and they're trying to target Target is using a different legal justification. The previous uh, attempt used the HEROES Act, which was passed after 9-11. This one uses the Higher Education Act, which was passed in the mid-1960s, and they believe that it will withstand legal challenges. And, Jose, this all comes as the administration tries to court younger voters. This is, of course, a huge issue for them. But over the last several months, they have uh, lost ground. Uh, the Biden campaign has lost ground among younger voters, among for several reasons, including the president's handling of the Israel-Hamas war. I spoke with several younger voters yesterday. Take a listen to what they had to say. If Biden is supporting genocide, there is no lesser evil than that. So we won't vote for him. Are you excited to vote for President Biden? Um, I would personally say no. I'm excited to vote for someone that's not Trump, but I wouldn't say that it is I'm excited for mm -hmm. Biden. Many of the younger voters that I spoke with, Jose, they say that they want to see more done on student loans, but that is what the Biden administration is trying to do. And they're hoping that over the next several months, they're able to get that message across to those kinds of voters. But even if there is a small shift from 2020 when it comes to younger voters who they've been, uh, former President Trump has been gaining among that group, even a small shift in that electorate could swing the election, Jose. Simone, just your thoughts on it. I mean, this is a big deal. This is something that specifically helps a lot of people. Yet, the announcement made during the eclipse, the solar eclipse yesterday, kind of was uh, eclipsed. <laughs> well, the president was in, I believe, what was Madison, Wisconsin, yesterday. Uh, uh, perhaps the schedulers didn't think about the eclipse happening during that time. But I think this is a huge deal. Uh, I think the Biden administration lost the messaging war on this very early because there were lots of activists and advocates that said Joe Biden didn't keep his promise on student loans. When the reality is, is the, the president did move to make an aggressive, a very aggressive play um, that would have kept his promise, but the Supreme Supreme Court smacked it down. And you didn't hear as much about the Supreme Court um, smacking down his student loan plan in the, in, in, the, in the time that it happened and in the months after, the months after, as you did for Republicans who didn't vote for the bipartisan infrastructure deal but took the money and is now talking about the money in their states. So very important. And I think we're going to hear more about, the, more about this in the campaign trail. Dasha Burns, Gabe Gutierrez, Stuart Stevens, and Simone Sanders Townsend. Thank you all so very much. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.